Hey guys, welcome to the JRB Tree Climbing channel. JRB Tree Climbing is also my website. It's my Facebook group. And for those who'd like to support me in my ventures with safe climbing, it is my Patreon. Feel free to join us there. I had quite a few questions about the optimal geometry for the JRB doubled stationary rope climbing system. So let's get you oriented. You're on a playlist, the JRB climbing method. The Jerry climbing method, I never thought I'd devise two, but I, but I did, is a, a doubled but stationary rope method where the rope goes up and over a tree crotch and we climb both sides simultaneously. So it's prerequisite knowledge that you've reviewed the history on this playlist so you understand what we're talking about. But I've been asked, what's the optimal geometry? So we're gonna fill in some blanks for you today on that and then show you how that geometry can help us climb with better technique. So it is prerequisite knowledge that you have watched and if you are endeavoring to climb this way and you are doing so carefully and at your own risk, you've already built a JRB Garda Hitch foot loop. So I've got a separate video on that. I've got two specimens here. This is the very foot loop that I built in that video. It's got two carabiners. It's got my special variant of a bull hitch into two loops and it's got what I call my best friend which is just a loop of cordage which provides redundancy for us while we climb. Here I've got a second JRB guard hitch foot loop and this one I created with just a single open loop but it's got that same bull hitch variant it's got that same redundancy got some bigger beaners here uh, I'm, I'm using these with a larger diameter or smaller diameter rope with great success so the first point I'd like to get to in the total of six variables that we've got to play with well the first one is your body height right different folks are different sizes and when I told you how to build a JRB guard a hitch foot loop it was based on our height and when we've built it properly, and I'll demonstrate with each of these, I put my foot in the loop. Well, they come up to about, about waist height. That's an ideal height for our JRB guard hitch foot loop. If yours comes up too high, you're gonna to wanna to shorten it. And if it comes too low, you may need to lengthen it a little bit. So that's the, that's the first two variables, your height and the foot loop. So we're gonna be demonstrating with this one today. The next two variables are your bridge. So I'm, I'm wearing my adjust, adjustable bridge as a pair of suspenders. So this is my upper bridge. Now your, your bridge might be fixed in size and it might be a different height than mine, but that's an important variable. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna clip into the system and show you when I sit down when I sit down into the saddle my nose touches the top of the carabiner now yours yours might be a different height your your uh, top of your carabiner might be your chin that depends on you and your saddle the point is that when we take our bridge length and then our friction hitches we want our hands to easily reach easily reach the top of those hitches in fact my wrist I can get my wrist to the top of my hitches that's ideal geometry okay so when I sit in my saddle and my nose touches the top of my beaner, what I do is I reach out my arm and I physically measured, I just got a ballpark measurement that from the tip of my nose to the bottom of my wrist is approximately 16 inches. And so when I'm tying my hitches, I always cut more cord than I need. So this is a, a, a 5-2-3 JRB Ascender in soft bridge mode. I just tied it, I just put in a, a cheap carabiner as my handle. I'm gonna collapse the one side and now I'm going to form my hunter's bend. But I'm not exactly sure what length I need. I'm going to just kind of eyeball that. Of course, refer to prior videos on tying the hunter's bend. So that's 
nice and loose, but I'm looking for an assembly that's roughly 16 inches from top to bottom, and I've achieved that. So that would be a good place for me to start. I'd snug this up, and then I would get on that and see how it feels. And I want to make sure that this is comfortably in my hand, and when uh, on a sit, I can comfortably reach the top of this. Again, it's a function of your height and the length of your primary bridge. My primary bridge is probably a little longer than most folks, so you might need yours a, a little longer. So I've got about roughly, roughly 12 inches in the loop, and, and the hitch itself takes about four inches. So that's how we tune that in. I generally always recommend cutting more cord than you need, and then simply uh, take the extra off. And you can get these uh, dimensions for different cords, different lengths on jrbtreeclimbing.com. I'll tell you how much to start with for the working end. And the working end shoots out here. So that's that's fixed and it's in a good position where I can always start my hunter's bend there and the variable becomes how much cord is left here. So this is what we're looking for. I see uh, folks climbing this way and they've got these really tiny little friction hitches where you can't get your hands on them. They ideally need to be uh, at least a foot or, or longer. Okay, now the so that's the third and fourth piece of geometry. The fifth and sixth piece of geometry are your short bridge. Now, if, if anyone's climbing and they're calling it a JRB climbing system, well, it's gotta have redundancy, right? You can climb any, any way that exists today and not have redundancy. One of the hallmarks of this method is that you have multiple points of connection to the rope. So I'm gonna engage my guard a hitch foot loop and I I've got my best friend here that that's my redundancy right I call it my best friend it clips into my redundant or short bridge now here's where this geometry plays out when I step into the system and get ready for a climb. When I pull the ropes up so that my thighs are horizontal, the top of the garda hitch is below my beaner for my bridge because I don't want them clanking together, right? I don't want them clanking together. So that's why it's advantageous to have a long bridge. Next. I need to be able to recover in the unlikely event that there was a problem and you needed your redundancy, I need to be able to recover. So what am I talking about? If I draw all of the slack out of the garda, all of the slack, the first point is the garda hitch is below my friction hitches. So I can't bring this up any further, right? Now let's simulate a slippage of a friction hitch. If I if I simulate that, you can see what happened. I am now, I now have tension on the best friend. And the geometry is such that I can still recover. I'm not eating my knee. I've got enough room here that if I need to recover, I can. See that again. I'm going to break. Get all the slack out. Break that. You can see I am I am, I'm not so deep that I can't recover. Now in we'll go over that in another video. In the event of a catastrophic failure, you know, let's say you mistied your bend and you needed to do a repair, well then you'd reach into your gear bag and you would make a repair. The point is I can break one or both of these friction hitches, there's nothing on them, and I can be safely on my best friend and I can recover. Okay, let's get a little better look at the Garda Hitch foot loop and the best friend loop. As described, it is the length of your lower or short bridge plus the length of the best friend loop, which determines how far up you can bring your Garda Hitch. Because at some point when you bring this up, 
this will become under tension when it hits your bridge. You want to make sure that that point is at least where your thigh is horizontal or maybe just an inch past that. And so you can, you can tune that using either the length of your bridge or the best friend. And I always cut a little bit more than I need. Again, in terms of the carabiners that you, you choose for your garter hitch, this one has a one and a half inch inside diameter, which performs well on, on most ropes. Now, if you go all the way up to an 11.4 millimeter, I've been experimenting with things that are even larger, and you can find links to this Kong beaner or whatever I find next on my website if you're climbing on even thicker ropes like arborist diameter ropes. But again, I got this best friend loop here. Well, how did I determine the length for that? Well, I start by cutting a little bit more than I need. So this is, uh, you know, approximately 44 inches of cord. And so I'll, I'll take a point just offset from the center. I'll form a clove hitch. You all know how to form a clove hitch, I hope. And we're going to put that in the carabiner so that it's exiting that way with those two strands coming out the back. So this is the completion of your garter hitch foot loop. So I've got a clove hitch with those two strands exiting out the back. And then the fine tuning is, well, where exactly, at what height exactly do I need to finish it? So it's a, it's a little bit of a guessing game, but for me it's about six or eight inches can't say I actually measured it. Now it might vary for you depending on the length of your bridge. So just tune that, right? Just tune that until you get it where you want it. You can always put a little bit more if we need it a little shorter. And tune that such that when you draw the garter hitch up and this begins to take tension that your thigh is at least horizontal and that the garter hitch is not bumping into your friction hitches. The garter hitch always must have some room above it because it can't be released under load. So we never want the garter hitch to be bumping up into something else. So we, you know, in general, we like a long primary bridge. We like upper friction hitches that have about a one foot loop or, or greater. We like a relatively short lower bridge. Uh, we tune the best friend length as appropriate and then just double check all of that geometry. So the fifth and sixth pieces of geometry are your short bridge length and your best friend length. Allow that to transpire. They've got a little room here and I, I can break them and go. Okay, so now that we've got all that geometry figured out, and we've did, done all of that while we're on the ground, I'm going to show you how that works in a real climb. When I walk up to the tree, I clip in first on the left, I'm sorry, the right side, then the left, and I'll get all the tension out. And you could, you could pull both lines, or you could, just pull, you could just pull one and shove that up. It doesn't matter, but I'm on my tiptoes, and now I can sit down into my saddle. I tend to leave my guard a hitch foot loop attached to my redundant bridge at all times because I can't lose it. Now I engage the guard a hitch, basically at waist height. Separate video on the guard a hitch and how to engage it. Now here, here's how I climb. I'm going to go do this really slowly. I bring up the guard a hitch so that my thigh is parallel to the ground. If I've got a tree trunk, as, as I do here to put my left foot on, I could, you know, could do this with either foot, I make that horizontal. I'm not hanging it down beneath me. It's out in front of me. And now for the rising move, I put a hand on each of my friction hitches, which have handles, either carabiners or in this case, rappel rings. And I just want to rehearse this, my ability to stand and sit back down. Stand and sit back down. Now, you'll notice when I stand, I'm putting my face close to the ropes, close to the ropes. And my foot, my load-bearing foot, I'm keeping it under my butt, right? I'm not, I'm not keeping it in front of me because that's no good. I need that foot under my butt. 
so that I'm close to the roads. So the very first time anyone climbs, they tend to they tend to do this. They tend to stand up and then shove one hitch up and then shove the other hitch up. And you know we can do that with good success. Sometimes if I'm climbing in a situation where I know there's deer nearby, right? I'm a hunter and I want to be optimally quiet, I might climb that way. But the most efficient way to climb is what I call the double shove, where I rise and then push both friction hitches up at the same time. Now here's the secret to that. The first thing is, it's a bit of an explosive move. I'm exploding upward. I'm not just really, you know, I, I'm giving a little extra so that when I get, as my body reaches the apex of that move, I am going to bring my face towards the ropes. Imagine you're, you're, you're going to kiss the ropes. You're, you're coming real close with your face. And at the same time, you're, you're shoving both of those friction hitches up. And of course, be careful not to punch yourself in the nose. So it's going to look like this. Ready? I, I realize that I'm making that look easy and, and some rehearsal might be necessary for anyone to achieve that, but it really is effortless. So I'm going to repeat that at what is kind of a normal pace for me and I'm just going to run up the tree, you know, 15 feet or so. probably maybe 18 feet off the ground. So the rest of the details you're familiar with in my engagement of the Munzer friction hitch. Break these friction hitches. One hand. Get them nice and loose. Okay, so, you know, there, there has to be a little rehearsal to get that down, but uh, remember those, those six variables. Your height drives the height of your guard hitch foot loop. It also affects the size of your reach. So this, the second two variables are the length of your upper bridge, where it comes to on your body, and you'll need to measure how much cord you need for friction hitches that are comfortably in reach at the top of your grip, comfortably not at the top, at the very, very top, right? We always gotta have little margin for error. And the last two variables are the length of your lower bridge. Yours might be fixed, you know, where mine is adjustable. And the length of this loop here. I, I tend to cut 48 inches, 42 to 48 inches, and then cut this back. And all of those instructions are on the video for how to create the JRB guard hitch foot loop. Okay, well, I hope that helps you both with the, your geometry, tuning your system, and your technique. Let me know what you think.